good lord. <laughs> I was not expecting this seat. I have no idea if my head is being chopped off or not. Who cares, right? Uh, anyway, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything here, we are in Chickamauga, Georgia, the battlefield where I don't know how many thousands of clueless morons were killed when 150 years ago here in Chickamauga, Georgia, here on this lovely, it is a Sunday evening, April 28th. 2024 and uh, speaking of collapse I have no idea what the situation with the battery either on this computer or this camera is so we're going to just dive into this uh, I mentioned this on Friday night this fellow uh, is kind of hit or miss on medium.com I never know what I'm gonna hear from Eric Lee. Eric Lee, but this week uh, Eric's uh, doomsday sermon is he's looking at this book uh, from a couple of years ago, Homo Ecophagus, which is what we're going to talk about. So take it away, Eric Lee, while we race the two batteries here. Eric Lee is talking about a doctor's diagnosis for the earth, a terminal human malignancy, starting out with the quote from the book, modern humanity is a cancer, and that is neither hyperbole, metaphor, nor analogy. Homo ecophagus is a book that I need to read. Homo Ecophagus is a book by Dr. Warren N. M. Hearn, spelled H-E-R-N. It is a look at the major problems for the survival of the human species and all other species on Earth due to, here we go again, modern human activities over the past tens of thousands of years, more or less 75,000 years. You know, again, we're seeing this term human activities. I don't know why he doesn't say uh, due to, to modern humans. Uh, anyway, uh, Hearn's new name for the human species translates as the hominin who devours the ecosystem, i.e. Earth's life support system also known as the biosphere. So, of course, a homo ecophagus is what I call a planet eater. It is uh, some, you know, either a planet nibbler or a planet eater. This is uh, Dr. Hearn's uh, term for planet eaters. Homo ecophagus, the hominin who devours the ecosystem. Over the course of its evolution, Hearn observes, humans have evolved a metastatic culture and form of civilization that has now become global, and that modern humans have all of the major characteristics of a malignant neoplasm converting all plant, animal, organic and inorganic material into human biomass, mutualist, otherwise known as the other domesticated animals who would not be here on the planet if it were not for humans, which is the reason that I eat chickens, for instance. Uh, or its supporting techno-adjuncts and control systems, otherwise known as the technosphere. <coughs> Her notes that expansionistic modern humans are incompatible with continued survival of the human species and almost all other species on the planet 
apart from other domesticants uh, offering a diagnosis and prognosis of the current environmental impasse, Dr. Hearn notices that cities, <coughs> cities like cancer, invade and destroy adjacent normal tissues, i.e. ecosystems. Cities metastasize to ever more distant locales. Cities are progressive, meaning growing, and cities are resistant to death. Well, we shall see about that, Dr. Hearn quoting the good doctor, but rapid, uncontrolled growth is the, well, to translate, it, it is basically the hallmark of cancer as long as the human population is growing at all. There is no, there is no, there is no hope of solving these major ecological problems, all the rest is secondary stuff. Close quote. Thank you, Dr. Hearn. Uh, there, they, you know, there is no such thing as a solution to uh, any ecological problem on this planet as long as the population of humans continues to grow. Uh, that, that, that humans are the problem. <clears throat> Dr. Hearn, however, is most, mostly a diagnostician like doctors in the late 19th century who had no viable interventions, treatments for many or most pathologies. They were at best able to tell you what was killing you e.g., you have pancreatic cancer and how you can expect to die. They can offer a likely etiology or prognosis with added palliative care. A course of treatment having a potential, a potentially viable outcome, can you say normal life expectancy, persistence as a viable subsystem of the Gaian system is a potential intervention, but requires a cultural physician. If our species is to persist longer than a few centuries or millennia, <clears throat> quoting uh, Dr. Hearn, at the moment we are the most misnamed species on the planet. Homo sapiens sapiens, wise, wise man, not. Hearn, an 84-year-old physician and adjunct professor of anthropology at the University of Colorado at Boulder, thinks his book's name provides a much more accurate description of humanity in the 21st century. Quoting, uh, th this is, uh, th this book was, is, was from 2022. Quote, I propose that the new scientific name of the human species be Homo ecophagus, the man who devours the ecosystem. <clears throat> Homo ecophagus is a rapacious, ubiquitous, predatory, omni-ecophagic species that is a malignant, epiopathologic process engaged in the conversion of all plant, animal, organic, and inorganic planetary material into human biomass or its adaptive adjuncts and support systems, close quote. Dr. Hearn 
sees modern humanity's unfettered population growth and voracious demand for resources as a kind of global plague, an affliction that is mindlessly, inexorably killing its host and thus itself because how could he not? Quote, quoting the good doctor, maybe we are not God's gift to creation, the flower of the universe. Maybe we are something much, much worse, a malignant process on the earth. Close quote. Uh, and then uh, Eric uh, breaks in uh, to this. I think I heard, I first heard this diagnosis in a letter to the editor in Scientific American in the 1970s. Once the condition is noted, the truth ceases to seem strange or unthinkable. And then quoting uh, my hero H.I. Mencken from 1916, truth would quickly cease to be stranger than fiction once we get used to it. The good doctor's best have uh, the good doctor's best have best have best have best hope of the offering is to note that there is one key difference between humanity and cancer. Quote, we can think and decide not to be cancer. I, I mentioned this uh, quote in my Ain't Gonna Happen rant from Friday night. Right now, we are choosing extinction, but we can change what we are doing and no longer be a cancer on the planet. Close quote. Yes. Then I guess Eric asked, would we eight billion and counting modern humans agree to become non-metastatic humans and prevent the eight modern humans who do not who do not from rapidly growing to again become the ninety nine point nine 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 percent? There you go. Uh, as Eric is pointing out, if we go from 8 billion to 8, it's not enough. If 8 humans are left on this planet, before we know it, there will be 8 billion of them. Back to uh, the good Dr. Hearn. In keeping with his longtime advocacy, for reproductive choices and population control. No, I guess this is back to Eric. I'm, I'm confused who's talking here. I think this is Eric talking. In keeping with his longtime advocacy for reproductive choice and population control, Hearn suggests those concerned about human destruction of the planet vote for candidates who, quote, don't force women to have babies they don't want, who promote a, quote, efficient economy based on good ecological principles, resource conservation instead of the next guy who wants to drill for oil in national parks and takes climate change seriously. Yes, it is the politicians, it is women's reproductive rights, and politicians that are going to uh, take on the problem of uh, homo ecophagus. I don't know what hopium Kool-Aid is bringing uh, and then as I mentioned this on Friday night, quoting the good doctor, we have choices to make. We can choose to change what we are doing and not be a cancer on this planet. Stop changing the biosphere irreversibly. 
that the longer we wait, the harder that choice is to make. And then Eric chimes in, I have been hearing the same or similar calls to action since the first Earth Day in 1970. Meanwhile, the pace of planetary destruction, excuse me, while I facepalm. There we go. I need to excuse myself while I check the battery, which seems to still be running. Okay, so where do we go from here, Eric and Dr. Hearn? As noted, we need a cultural physician, maybe several, maybe 1,700 working in groups of 7 to 13. Imagine 170 groups of determined systemic doctors working unpaid for posterity's sake, of course, to both diagnose and prescribe a viable course of treatment. Oh, but instead, 1,575 diagnosticians told us back in 1992 to tell our politicians to do something. He was talking about basically that letter to the planet from the first uh, UN talks back at the Earth Summit of 1992 when 1,575 uh, scientists were saying uh, the same thing that uh, Dr. Hearn is still saying because solutions are above their pay grade and not their job in service to the economy. The situation is that the determined patient willfully lacks a grasp of reality. Yes. Uh, and then he has uh, the, the famous Pogo the Possum cartoon we have met the enemy, and he is us. Thank you, Pogo the Possum. What year was that? 1971. 1971, that uh, comic strip, Pogo the Possum. We have met the enemy, and he is us. Back to Eric. Metastatic growth, I think Andy the gardener calls this the mega cancer. Metastatic growth in one individual organism does differ from our relationship as a metastatic subsystem to that of the Gaian system. Normal metastatic cancer terminates with the death of the somatic host, it is a pathology of that that it also that it also terminates is why it's dynamic and our modern techno-industrial dynamic form of civilization is non-evolvable. We moderns will not terminate all life on the planet, but maybe all eukaryotic life if we try harder. Uh, we don't have colony of cells around anymore to define eukaryotic life. <clears throat> the, Gaian the Gaian system, you know, yeah, I guess you can call that the biosphere, will persist you know, after we have come and gone, we humans will not unless some can become non or accumulated acculturated humans who as K acculturated humans can persist as evolvable animals and humans again. And uh, if you don't know what all of that, uh, that R and K stuff is he has a link to uh, what, what he's talking about here. 
Such, now this is according to Eric Lee, such is the only cure, the ending of modernity of modern humans in all forms to thereby end the Anthropocene, the condition that will come, that will come anyway, whether all modern humans take up arms against a sea of troubles to persist or not. So, uh, th there you go. I mean, the, the, the end of modernity, and I would say the extinction of the human race, is going to happen anyway. So, uh, what do you think is the chance that since we all realize it's going to happen anyway, we're just all going to work for a softer landing? Posterity will pay our overshoot debt. Unknown is whether any humans will mutate into a viable form of human and persist during the downslope phase, which he says, according to one thing, takes 8 to 20 generations. I don't think we're going to see 8 to 20 generations uh, of humans in the final downslope phase. As 8 bill as more than 8 billion humans decline to a viable population well below the carrying capacity of a severely degraded planetary life support system, likely by chaotic descent. As usual, sorry about that. We don't have a climate change problem. We have a form of civilization problem. Uh, we, we, we have a climate change problem. We have a form of civilization problem. And it's all due to we have a problem on this planet called humans. Uh, we will see if ending modernity, if ending modern humans by uh, the collapse of everything uh, will be enough to solve the problem, although as stated earlier in the chapter, uh, if we get down to eight humans left on the planet, eight humans. I guess if one of them is a female, but I guess they're suggesting if we get down to four couples uh, left on this planet, uh, that's enough to, to go right back up to eight billion again. Although it would be interesting to see if the eight people, uh, these eight mythical people who come out the other side of the bottleneck, if the eight of them... Uh, are going to come up with something like fossil fuels again. We shall see. But anyway, uh, thank you, Eric Lee and Warren Hearn. But, but of course, you, you know, even Dr. Hearn uh, talking all of this, this, this crap uh, about voting for the right candidate and supporting women's reproductive rights, which I very much support uh, women's rights to not let their knickers down. Uh, other than that, uh, uh, it, it, it ain't gonna happen. Uh, as much as I support women's reproductive rights, uh, voting for the right candidate uh, that were voluntarily uh, just going to stop being a cancer on this planet when every single iota of, uh, of, of, of scientific evidence from biological to historical, 100% of the evidence says it ain't going to happen. 
that we're going to do this voluntarily. It ain't going to happen voluntarily. So as Eric points out, it is still going to happen. It's just not going to happen voluntarily. Uh, and, and the big question is, will the eight people who come out the other side of this collapse uh, gonna gonna turn back into eight billion or not? But uh, I don't think any of us will be around for that. But anyway, my little domesticant, my little domesticant has had a long, hard day. So uh, okay, my little domesticant. We gotta wrap this up because I need to refresh my drink. My throat is getting dry. I will be back on the road. I will be spending the night in Kentucky tomorrow night. And then I will be back in New York, baby, on Tuesday. Breakfast in Kentucky, dinner in New York, baby. Bye, guys. Okay, my little domesticant. Yes.